Let's now focus on AWS Cloud HSM. We already discussed about AWS KMS. KMS is the front end which allows me to manage my keys and behind the scene there would be hardware which we call HSM devices on which my keys would be stored and managed. So AWS physically maintains this HSM and they have full logical ownership of this HSM. All the upgrade patches, deployment, uh, availability is maintained by them. These are used in a shared way that becomes shared HSM devices. It is multi-tenant. What I mean by that, that on one physical device, there may be multiple customers key stored and obviously AWS would be doing some high availability mechanism behind the scene. So one failure, hardware failure doesn't bring down a lot of customer. So they would take care of availability of the service. And once this has been placed, my application would start accessing these keys, which are physically managed in a HSM device. So that makes sense. And we pay less cost on that because it is a shared infrastructure like taking a commercial flight in which multiple people are going with you. On the other hand, you may ask for a private jet, but the cost of private jet could be very, very high. And why somebody may look for private jet? Maybe there is some security concern in our world. Maybe there is a compliance requirement which says we can't use any shared hardware. So what we may have to do in that case, we may have to look for a dedicated HSM device, which is a single tenant device. Only one single tenant is allowed to use this particular device and how it is created for you. It is created into a logical component, which is called AWS Cloud HSM cluster. So once this cloud HSM cluster is ready, which is a logical entity, you may have here one HSM device or you may go up to 32 HSM devices inside it and they would be single tenant. They would be only hosting keys from one single customer across multiple accounts. That is completely possible. But the ownership of that in terms of physicality is with AWS. AWS physically maintains the HSM, but customer get the full logical ownership of the HSM and they decide who to make its admin and what type of thing to do with that. This is one single tenant device. What if this device itself fails? So cloud HSM cluster, we could deploy with one node and get started, but we recommend that you should have multiple nodes so that even if one of them fails, your availability won't be compromised. So this single tenant HSM device is, is created within a cloud HSM cluster. Now I'll quickly compare difference between KMS and cloud HSM. So KMS has a specific scope, AES-256 and RSA encrypt, RSA and ECC sign. These are various standard of encryption, whereas cloud HSM is most general purpose HSM function like encrypt, sign, verify, derive, hash, wrap. These are very specific security things. When it comes to secrets or key store, it is stored in a shared FIPS validated HSM. It is physical device, same type of standard, but it is shared, whereas in cloud HSM, it is a single tenant device. And what happens, this has a integration point in your VPC. So when you deploy a cloud HSM cluster, you specify in which of your VPC you want it to get connected to and which availability zone it should be spanning across. Difference here, scalability and management is done by AWS. Keys are managed by AWS in this particular case, but in cloud HSM's case, everything is defined by customer. The control, scalability and management is done by customer themselves. Who accesses the key? Key access by AWS IAM and resource policy. That's how we control access. Whereas in cloud HSM, you define your own credentials by which you access your services. AWS KMS integrate with various AWS services, S3, DynamoDB and all, whereas Cloud HSM has no integration. You have to bring your own application to leverage this particular service. How the operations are implemented, so you can use CLI, SDK or encryption SDK. Here for using Cloud HSM, you have to build your own application. Key rotation is not done by you. In KMS case, AWS is doing the key rotation, not in term when you are bringing your own key or customer key store, you do not, AWS won't take care of that. And in Cloud HSM, this responsibility is solely on the customer. So I hope this thing is clear. Let me quickly go into console. I won't create a cluster, but I, at least I will walk you through the process of that, how this particular service may look like. 
So I'm going into my con console here and here I am looking for cloud HSM as a service. So here we could see cloud HSM managed hardware security module in AWS cloud. What we start with, we start with creation of cluster. I would get error here because I do not have permission, but just you walk you through the process. You start with selecting a VPC in which your cluster would have entry points. So I'm selecting it to go across two subnet, which is a good thing. And then I would say I would be creating a new cluster or would I be creating a cluster from backup? So if I have already existing backups from a previous cluster installation, I could have just restored it and create a cluster. So as I said, cluster is a logical entity which you are creating. So if you feel that I created a cluster and I need that cluster to have one node, obviously you could have one node on that. Maybe you want to scale and have up to 10 node. You could go ahead and have up to 10 node on that doesn't uh, means that is completely up to your action and if you want the same cluster can be with zero node also that is not at all a problem let's say you have to encrypt a 10 gb of data just give an example you encrypted it today and you would be needing that data after three years in decrypted format so i don't have to keep my cluster running for that long i would create a cluster use the keys by that cluster to encrypt my 10 GB data, store it and retain it for three years, delete my cluster. Obviously before that I have to take my backup. I would keep my backup and when I have to restore this data back, I would again go into my cluster and say, hey, I want to restore and I want to have my backup restored. My node would be ready with the backup and now I could decrypt my data and afterward I could again have cluster coming back to zero. And this backup which I'm taking, it can also be transferred to another region in case you want to maintain availability of it across region. That is also possible. So I hope you have an idea of what is a cluster. So first thing I am creating here is creating a cluster. So you can select only one subnet. After the cluster is created, you cannot add or remove subnet. We recommend you select at least two availability zones. So this is something you have to be very sure on initially. Then next, I have a backup retention period. Obviously, you could enter a period from 7 to 379 days. It is up to you. You may add some tags on that. And once you are ready, we would be able to have your cluster ready. Cluster is just a logical entity. Once your cluster gets ready, you have to initialize the cluster and while initializing, you will add one or more cloud HSM devices inside it. So this is a cluster and inside that you would have a HSM device or up to 32 HSM devices. So I hope this thing is clear. Right. Now, what if, if I have to manage these keys now? So I created a cluster, but I don't want to manage those keys through my own application. I want to manage keys through KMS itself because here I get IIM on resource policies and then I have integration with various AWS services. So that's where we could have best of both worlds, which is KMS custom key store. What I mean by that, it would be better if I explain to you into the UI. Let's go back to the console and we will now try to go to the service KMS as a service. So here I am going to key management service and when I am creating this key, I could specify that I want to leverage the cloud HSM cluster. All right, let's move forward. Now I'm going ahead here and say I want to create a key, symmetric key, asymmetric, encrypt, decrypt, whatever is my usage and here is the important aspect. I could say where I want my key material to originate from. So my key material could originate from AWS Cloud HSM key store. AWS KMS create the key material in AWS Cloud HSM cluster of your Cloud HSM key store. So here I am still having entry point from KMS as a service, but the key material is being originated into that dedicated cluster which I may have created. Obviously it would fail because I do not have a cluster created but if I had I could go ahead and first say okay I do not have a cluster first I have to create a custom key store that is again the same thing I have to specify the cluster information here and based on that 
I would be able to set up a KMS user, username and password. Once my cluster is ready, that would be used to store or originate the key material for me. So that is what we mean by best of both the world. You get the flexibility of KMS and integration of it with other services and you still get the HSM control which you may be looking for for your compliance reason. So that's what is there. So I won't read the whole thing here but it, this table is available and you should be able to get in more detail based on this table. So I hope this thing is clear. I hope you were able to relate things what is encryption, decryption, what is KMS, what is HSM, what is cloud HSM, what is keys. So hope you have enjoyed and learned something new. We would keep on continuing our security discussion. This may be the longest module for the whole training. In next section, we will talk about distributed denial of service attack. So thank you and see you soon.